Yo, 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 what is up guys, Nick Nakai here, Let's Drift Media. Thank you for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button down below. So on today's episode, we are going to be unboxing and testing out the Xtool D8 bi-directional scan tool. So really excited to test out this scanner and play around with it. Uh, I've done a couple other scan tool videos on this page, but this scan tool kind of separates itself from the rest of them. As far as the features and capabilities it has, um, it has so many features. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to show you each and every single one of the features, at least not on my car, but I'll at least try and run down some of these features that this scanner can do on other vehicle makes that it won't do on my car itself. But anyways, should be a good episode. So let's just cut right to it. Uh, I'll try and keep the talking to a minimum. Let me just go over some key features really quick for those of you who don't really wanna see it in action, and then we'll go ahead and plug it into my Lexus and we can see what it does. We'll start with most important thing price this thing right out the box this is the wired version they make wired and bluetooth but wired is 6.99 and the bluetooth version is 7.69 so depending on what you want to go through wired or wireless so out the box you get the scanner nice little protective case foam padding inserts little velcro to hold the scanner in place we have our cable adapter well as our obd2 port so that'll plug into the vehicle Comes with the USB cable as well as the charging cable. One cool thing about the wired version is though, when you have it plugged into the vehicle, it's charging the battery. So I really like that about the wired version. This scan tool can do ECU coding somewhat, uh, module reprogramming or at least relearning when installing new modules into a vehicle. It has full bi-directional controls. So anywhere from power windows, door locks, wiper motor, radiator fan, electric water pump, uh, moonroof, rear trunk latch, pretty much everything you can control with this scanner at the touch of a finger. It has over 31 special functions from tire pressure monitor, uh, sensor relearning calibration to the vehicle, ABS actuator, air bleeding procedures, uh, key fob programming, uh, lost all your keys, reprogramming, reprogramming all brand new keys to the vehicle, uh, mileage reset for certain vehicles like some Chevys and stuff you can actually program the odometer to a new mileage say you replace that gauge cluster injector coating pretty big on BMWs and even zero point calibration on Toyotas when you replace a windshield or replace a millimeter wave radar sensor you got to re uh, perform the zero point calibration so pretty nice to know that a lot of these dealer specific scan tools that I would use while working at the dealership now can be done right here from my own garage or especially for you if you're working at an independent shop or running your own gig stuff like that it does have a boroscope attachment slot they do sell a boroscope that you can buy and also run it with this scan tool the last greatest thing i would say is it comes with three years of free updates after that it does cost about 200 dollars for a year of updates but you don't need to update the scan tool every single year. That's just if you wanted the current most up-to-date software on the scan tool, or maybe a new vehicle year came out that this scan tool wasn't out, or you don't have the software for this scan tool when that vehicle came out. But it's still relatively cheap in comparison to Snap-on. I actually Googled it how much to update their scan tools, and it costs anywhere from like $450 to $1,000 for a one-year update on one of their scan tools. So $200 really isn't that bad when you're comparing it to that. And they claim it works with up to 88 car manufacturer makes. So that's a pretty nice variety, knowing that you should have no problem at least uh, connecting to any type of vehicle you're looking for. Besides that, of course, it has the basic features like read check engine lights, read fault codes, clear fault codes, uh, read uh, readiness monitors for smog, as well as live data. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull on my Lexus and we'll get hooked up, because it is pretty hot in this garage and I need to sit in some AC now. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I put a coupon code in the description down below if you are looking to pick up this scanner and you will get 8% off your order. So kind of a good chunk off when you're talking about a $700 scan tool. So you're welcome guys. Real quick guys too, I am doing a giveaway, giving away three scan tools. Unfortunately, not this scan tool in particular, but uh, Xtool is allowing me to give away three 
free AD10 pocket scan tool. So those are the Bluetooth ones where it's just the scanner. You plug it into the OBD2 port and you use your phone to sync up to it. And with that, you can't do as much as a two-way scanner, of course, but you can check codes, clear fault data, uh, read live stream data, as well as check uh, monitor readiness. So see if you're ready for smog. So if you made it this far to the video, which is probably in a couple minutes, uh, drop a comment and like this video. In probably a week or two weeks max, I will be going live on my YouTube channel and picking three winners. So normally I just pick one winner. This time we're choosing three winners. So shout out to X Tools for allowing me to do this. Anyways, back to the video. Alrighty, so we are in my 2017 Lexus CT200H. It's a little hybrid. Hopefully the AC is not too loud, but it is freaking hot out here. So at least I can send the AC. Oh, let it sit too long. But go ahead and hit the power button here on the top. We are plugged in right here down to the OBD2 port down there. So real quick, I'll just go ahead and do the auto scan just to show you kind of the speed, how it's like. See, it already pulls up. Lexus, USA, no radar crews, broke boy. Okay, just do an automatic scan. This pretty much just does like a full on health check. Scans all the control modules in the vehicle for any DTCs. And what may look kind of slow to you is actually not slow at all. Working at Toyota at the dealership using the Toyota scan tool, running uh, pretty much a health check on all the control modules in a vehicle with at least this many modules, you'd probably be sitting there for like five minutes waiting for this screen to load up. So this is actually pretty fast. Almost done. I'm gonna close the garage, I'm getting a little bit of glare, hold on. But just to show you guys, we are done with the health check. All right, so much better. Uh, right now, I'll just scroll through. You can see if you were to have a check engine light or ABS code, anything, fault code stored in your vehicle, it would show up here. So my car has nothing wrong with it right now. I could unplug something to give it a check engine light, but you guys know how a fault code works and how it pops up. So we're gonna go back out of here Exit automatic scan, yes. Let's get our, let's check out system selection. So here we have a list of modules or systems in the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and just play around in here. So let's just hit sliding roof. Control is the open function of sliding roof. So again, you can read the fault data but we'll just do a quick actuation test of the sliding roof. Move sunroof, open, close. All right. Nope, don't need to monitor it. All right, let's just give it a whirl. Pretty cool. Little things like that are kind of cool to uh, control through a scan tool. You might be thinking like, oh my God, Nick, you just opened your sunroof, big look. But if say for some reason you had a sunroof that wasn't opening, uh, you weren't sure if it was the control panel that was bad or it was something in the wiring. Uh, being able to control it through the ECU itself is kind of nice because say you did have a bad controls panel. Uh, being able to come in here and actually activate the sunroof and tell it to open through the ECU would pretty much indicate that it's the switch right there, just not t giving the signal for the ECU to open the sunroof window. So you could do that pretty much for all the windows uh, in this vehicle, as well as the door lock actuators. I'm not gonna show you guys each and all of those because it would be kind of repetitive, but you guys get what I'm saying with the active test at least. And I think that's a pretty cool feature that is kind of necessary to have in a scan tool when it comes to diagnosing trouble cars. So coming back, to the system selection. These are all areas of the vehicle that it will give you control over to do active tests in. We got air conditioner, theft deterrents so that you wanted to test out the horn or the locking system on the vehicle, main body, 
passenger door, driver's seat, combination meter. This is kind of cool because you can go in there and actually control the gauge needles, check the operation of them, make sure the tack and the speedometer needle and the fuel gauge needle aren't getting stuck or anything. Uh, you could actually do like a full sweep. So that's kind of fun to play with. Yeah, kind of showing you guys uh, the options, at least for my vehicle. One cool thing that I found out with this though, is I was able to kind of do uh, customizations I would at the dealership. Like a lot of people would come in asking like they want to turn off the beeping when you put the vehicle in reverse. Originally this car would continue to beep, continue to beep. And it really bothered me, but since I wasn't working at Toyota anymore, I couldn't go back to the dealer and just uh, turn off that setting anymore. But having this scan tool, I was able to do the customizations with the uh, reverse beeping and set it to just beep once or even not at all when putting the car in reverse. Same, you guys saw the door locks locked when you put it in gear. I was also able to customize that versus not having it locked when you put it in gear or, or come to park. So that was pretty cool as well as there was a feature I didn't know this vehicle had where if you hold the unlock on the key fob, you actually roll all the windows down before you even get to the car and air it out. So that was another uh, feature of my vehicle that I actually found through messing around with all these settings in here. So if you're looking to kind of make some little small customizations on your car that you would otherwise have to take your vehicle to the dealer, this is a pretty good scan tool to get that done. And like I said, pretty much every system in here, if you were to go into it, you can uh, do the active test of whatever system. Like this one's the hybrid vehicle proximity. When the motor's off, it kind of makes like a humming noise that hybrids do to let people know that there's a hybrid vehicle nearby. You can come in there and do the active test and just make sure that's working or just kind of play around with whatever you're playing, uh, trying to work on or diagnose. So before we get out of the system selection, I'll just go ahead and show you guys the live data, how it looks on this scan tool. Cause this one's pretty clean. And one thing I do like about this scan tool is it's fairly fast. Like it's not too buggy or laggy where you just like sit in there for a st stupid amount of time waiting for a screen to load. So right now this is our live data. This is on uh, uh, just a list view. If you did want to look at specific things, like let's just say you wanted to look at short term long term fuel trim uh, throttle position sensor and engine speed and we'll just throw in coolant temp the quick touch like that you can combine them and right now we just have them all together as well as the graph form so sometimes when diagnosing vehicles it's a little bit easier when you have the graph form because you could actually see it moving versus just seeing the numbers moving and another cool thing is say you're looking at some live data, um, not only can you record it, you can also just hit this little button down here and you can just take a quick screenshot. No matter what screen you're on, I really like that screenshot function, uh, especially when it comes to like the tire pressure sensors. I'll show you guys that in a little bit too. And like I said, the refresh rate with the data is pretty smooth. It doesn't take too long to uh, update that data you're viewing in comparison to real time. I believe you can record too. I think we have to get out of here though. Uh, you would just hit data recording right down here. And now it's recording pretty much. And it's storing it into the internal SD card in here, or not internal SD card, into the SD card that comes with this. I believe it's a two gigabyte, don't quote me on that, or it has its uh, own hard drive in here. But you could save some data in here. If you ever wanna save some data and then come back to it later or even show the customer what's going on with their vehicle. As well as being able to take a photo, say you're under the hood, even though everyone has smartphones nowadays, but it's kind of cool that they threw in the camera, I guess. So I'll just scroll down, show you guys some more of the live data that you can view on this. And all this data you're seeing right here, if you're doing an active test or a, a special functions test, you can view this data as well. It asks you if you would like to monitor the data of what's going on when you're performing these active tests. So pretty readily available to view whatever data you would like to view. Even has our monitor completion status right here. Let you know if your vehicle is ready for smog.
kind of going through the list. This is actually a pretty long list. Let's see. Oh my god. Is that 196? Oh no. I thought it meant 196 pages. I was like, there is not that much data in this vehicle. So yeah. Definitely a lot of data. A lot more than you need usually, but better to not need it and have it than need it and not have it. So still in the engine category, uh, I came over to the actuation test just to show you the list of uh, actuation tests that you could perform, at least on my vehicle. You see right here, activate the electric water pump. Uh, kind of cool for some BMWs, you have to activate the electric water pump to bleed the cooling system. You can do it with like the little foot procedure or whatever way they do it, but it's kind of cool to actually just do it through the scan tool. Connect TC to TE1, that's very helpful on Toyotas. For some reason, they go into like this weird stupid mode, I call it, and like you can't program the tire pressure sensors. Uh, like when you even going through the scan tool and you go to pro hit program, it kind of crashes and bugs out on you and it's like telling you like unable to communicate. And there's nothing wrong with the vehicle, but you just gotta go down there and short TC to TE1 down there on the OBD2 pins. But it's kind of a pain in the ass and usually you just end up getting a paper clip and you're sitting there trying to find which pins they are because you don't want to short the wrong pins together. So I thought that was really cool. Anyways, back to today's scheduled episode. Um, yeah, control the cooling fan. So you wanted to turn on the radiator fan, make sure that was working. That, And then you could even go down to the radiator fan connector and make sure you're getting power there when it's supposed to get power. And that would kind of help you on your diagnosis right there. You can even control the fuel pump speed, the EGR step position to make sure your EGR is functioning correctly. Open it up a little bit more and see your engine kind of bogging down, indicating a good EGR. Injection volume, you could do fuel cut. You do all kinds of cool stuff. Very, very cool. So we'll get out of this menu. Uh, let's check out special functions. I think we were just there. Uh, learning value reset. It's kind of cool. Put a new motor in or even a new transmission. Uh, you got to reset the learning values. You don't want your new transmission shifting like your old transmission. So of course you'd probably go to the transmission ECU to do that. But the learning value reset is something that I've only seen at Toyota with the Toyota scan tools. So. I just think it's really awesome to be able to do a lot of these things I was doing at the dealership and people pay money to do that stuff and now just having it here at home. So we're going to get all the way out of here. Special functions. Go back to the special functions. So these are just the generic special functions. Not all of these will apply to the vehicle you are plugged in, but these are just the functions that this uh, scan tool is capable of doing. We have our oil reset throttle, electronic parking brake, steering angle sensor. So you installed a new steering angle sensor and you had to recalibrate it or do that zero point calibration. You'd probably be in there. Key programming, that's pretty cool. A lot of people lose their key fobs. Being able to just buy a key from the dealership, select what vehicle you have and just add the key to your collection versus spending an hour at dealer labor rate to get your key program. When you do it yourself, or even the technician, it's honestly like a 10 minute job. So, really like that one, in case I ever need to add key fobs, or even customer cars. Instrument cluster. This one, um, I'm actually gonna try this out pretty soon, because my friend has a Chevy, or GMC Sierra, whatever. Uh, he bought a Denali gauge cluster, and apparently with this scan tool, you can reprogram the mileage since it's in the cluster itself. He wants it to match his original cluster. So I'll let you guys know if that works out. But for now, I can't do that. Toyota, it will not allow you to do that. It's something you actually have to send to or have Toyota do. Not even Toyota dealership, uh, Toyota parts. When they get the part, it already has the mileage in the uh, odometer. Uh, tire pressure monitor reset, that is pretty cool. Uh, say you broke a tire pressure sensor, they're freaking expensive and it's even more to program your tire pressure sensors. Or even if you had a set of winter wheels and summer wheel wheels, if they all had sensors in it, it's kind of cool knowing that you could uh, just swap them out. Asia. Sometimes I get confused because I don't know if it's asking me my car or my country. 
when I act. So we have the relearn function right here. Information. This is kind of cool. Not information. Where is it? Diagnostics. So we have our tire pressure sensor IDs right here. Um, this is kind of cool because on Toyotas, when you go to reprogram the tire pressure sensors, you need to remember to not program the sensor ID that was bad and replace that with the new sensor ID that would be located on the new tire pressure sensor. This is kind of cool to just take like a quick screenshot and know which sensor ID you're replacing. I believe if we go to the live data though, it should show the PSI per sensor. Okay, yes. Yeah. So I went back to the health check and just went to the tire pressure monitor live data. So right here, we have the sensor ID. And right here, if it'll load, we have the sensor ID as well as the tire pressure. It's in KPA right now. I'm sure you could change that probably to PSI somewhere in the settings, but we're not gonna worry too much about that. But that's kind of cool, because being at Toyota, you would have a bad tire pressure sensor. The vehicle is not gonna tell you left front, right front, right rear, which sensor. What we would go in and do is pull out the scan tool, view this data right here, deflate one tire all the way to zero, and wait to see which one drops. And then we would match that with the sensor ID, and then we would know that was the bad sensor. So definitely love to have that. So, yep, back to the special functions. Here are some more you can do. Got the key programming, transport mode. Not sure why you really want to mess with that. Airbag reset, tire upgrade. I believe this on some vehicles is kind of cool. Say you get a bigger size tire, uh, you could actually let your vehicle know and probably put in the calibration for what size wheels and tires you have. So that way your speedometer is actually accurate. But my vehicle is a Lexus and they do not support those kind of activities. So, yeah, window initialization. For my case, you just hold the window power button all the way down, then all the way up. But some vehicles actually need to get all these initialized. The injector coding at BMW, I remember that was a thing. You actually had to input the injector code into the ECU to let it know that that's the injector that it's running now. Language change. I mean, a lot of those settings are in the vehicle itself, but still cool, cool. And coming down here, this one, another one I want to show you, the ABS bleeding. At least on pretty much any car nowadays, they have an ABS actuator and it requires special bleeding procedure. There's no longer pump the brakes three times and hold. If you replace the actual actuator itself, uh, usually it's a lot more pain in the ass. Um, well, it's kind of cool to be able to uh, just bleed it yourself from here. Go through this little menu and it'll kind of uh, give you the step-by-step -step activating the ABS actuator and telling you which wheel to bleed. Make your life a little bit easier. So let's see, I'm kind of gonna get into it. I don't really wanna start the process. I just kind of wanna tap into it. Purge air from the ECB system when bleeding and share. yep. So, usual air bleeding, uh, ABS actuator has been replaced. One day I'll get to try it. Uh, again, like a lot of these things, I will use the scan tool again, and when I do these special functions on repair or helping a friend out, I will show you guys, so don't worry. So yeah, I mean, it got out of special functions. You guys saw pretty much everything in there. It just kind of sucks, because a lot of the stuff I can't really mess with on the Lexus, but the active test, is kind of my favorite part. Just being able to control pretty much anything computer controlled in this vehicle, which is pretty much everything. It's kind of cool to be able to control it, especially when you're trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with your car. So right here we have the main, just diagnostic. This would be, I believe, if you didn't want to do the auto scan. Um, also kind of just shows you all the makes and models that this thing can uh, diagnose. crazy because a lot of these I don't even know like what is a Jeep but yeah uh, definitely has a lot of features um, like for somebody just at home who just wants to kind of see what their check engine light says and erase the code after they replace something uh, this scan tool is probably a little bit overkill i would say this is more if you're actually working on cars pretty more in depth doing a little bit more diag uh, 
getting a lot of side work in, then this scan tool might pay off for you because like I said, a lot of the stuff you guys saw me talk about uh, and kind of play with, those are things that before I was only doing at the dealership. So having it with you is uh, makes it a pretty powerful tool, especially if you know what you're looking at with that data, when it comes to diag, it can really help you out. And as you guys can see, this thing is sitting pretty nice on the steering wheel. I don't know if I set this, but it has a nice little kickstand and it just works out really nice, sit on the steering wheel. Really making my job, at least filming this video right now, a whole lot easier having it down on my lap. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the X-Tool D8 scan tool. Again, I wasn't able to show you guys everything it can do, of course, because my Lexus only has so many uh, features that that vehicle comes with, but I mean, you guys saw some of the options you can do to other makes and models of cars and stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments below. And don't forget to enter that giveaway when yourself a free little pocket scanner. So shout out to X-Tool for sending me out the D8 Super badass scan tool, couldn't be happier with it. Uh, for what you get for the price, I think it's a good bang for your buck. So that's all I got for you guys this time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like always, catch you guys later. Peace!